So this is a how-to video to make a light up colored vinyl uh, record clock. It's using a clear, transparent blue uh, vinyl record, some LEDs and a clock mechanism. Uh, about probably 40, $45 altogether. This is very much a prototype. There are some issues as you'll see as we go through the video, but uh, at least you have a sense of what this is like and uh, you can figure out how to make the build yourself or even improve on it. So again, what this is, it's a record and uh, it turns on and off. There's a switch. So that's it off. That's it with it on. And when it's on, it uh, it lights up and uh, gives a kind of a neat effect. And we'll show you how we did that with some aluminum foil. All right, so we're gonna catch you up. We have not videotaped every step up to this point. Uh, we really weren't sure if it was gonna work. So it looks like it will probably work. We are pretty much doing a prototype, uh, I would say, like a rough draft of it. So let me tell you about the parts that we have. Um, so that's gonna be the front. You can see the clock uh, mechanism sticking out there. So here's the back of it. So let me explain to you where we got the part. So this, cl this clock mechanism came from this clock. Okay, so it was in here. We got this at Goodwill for literally a dollar. Um, I had to unscrew it, take the front plate off, and then you literally pop off the hands. So let me show you, there's the second hand, this clock had second hand, uh, the minute hand and the hour hand. And you're gonna see when we put it back together, there are three separate spots for that on there. All right, so it was on there and you literally just pop it off very carefully. And so what we then realized was uh, that we probably wanted to be able to hang this somehow. And we had decided that some kind of tin foil, aluminum foil in the back, um, was gonna reflect the light better and make a cool pattern. So we had to figure out a way to almost like house it. You know, some kind of frame isn't the right word, but some kind of housing for it. So when we were at that same Goodwill where I found the clock, I found this, I guess it would be like a cookie thing or a cupcake holder. And I noticed the size, I said, oh, that's an interesting size. Um, and as it happens, it fits in there like perfectly, like I'm not gonna push it all the way down, but it fits in there perfectly. And so what we're gonna do is when it's done is put it in like that and oops, <clears throat> fill this in. Obviously we're gonna put the tin foil in here, okay? So this was $2, probably gonna cut this piece off. I guess we could theoretically hang it by that, but I don't necessarily think that's a good look. So again, because we're doing this kind of on the fly, we've hot, I've hot glue gun stuff. So this is hot glue gun, and you can see even the batteries, which is slightly ridiculous, are hot glue gunned. It's slightly ridiculous because obviously anytime you gotta switch them, you gotta take them out. So we do have a plan of a really crude drawing. You probably can't even tell what this is. Um, 3D print a housing. Like here's the batteries. There'd be a 3D housing around each battery. There'd be some inserts to hold the clock. Um, but at the moment, we're not going to do that because we want to make sure that this actually works. Um, so let's talk about the lights. I'm going to have my son do that because he was the one who taught, you know, who, who got, uh, who did the lights. So for the lights, we use these Chibi Tronics white LEDs. They look uh, uh, like this. So essentially you've got like the actual LED and then on each side, uh, positive and negative. It's like very thin. And also on the back, there's like some sticky stuff. Um, we just took like a cardboard strip essentially, uh, kind of like folded it around this uh, hockey uh, puck or, um, thing <laughs> um, so that it's fairly circular. Use tape to like, uh, connect it so now hopefully like when we put it around this it's fairly circular hopefully the like lights will shine out fairly evenly um, and so with the lights what we have is we put them all we glued them uh, like around it trying to space it fairly evenly um, and then we use this copper tape 
uh, on each side, uh, like the top and bottom. And so essentially we're just creating like a uh, circuit uh, where like all of them are connected in series, I think. Um, and we just connect the positive and negative to these sides and it should power all of them theoretically. We considered using an LED strip instead of these like individual LEDs uh, because it would be a lot easier. You just kind of like stick or glue the LED strip on this instead of having this whole like um, copper tape, which sometimes doesn't work so well. Um, but what we, uh, why we went for these is because of the low profile, like they're kind of just stick on there and they're not really popping off too much, which we think the LED strip might be a little like bigger and bulkier and stuff, but um, we might consider that for like a second iteration. Um, and so now I'm gonna uh, show you how it works. Um, and sometimes not all of the LEDs light up because the copper tape like isn't pressed down enough. I'm gonna connect the leads of the positive and negative wires to this. Yeah, make sure they don't touch and short, yep. right? I'm gonna connect these and then I'll try and make it so most of them work. Because as you can see right now, there's a number of them that are not doing very well. Okay, so what do you have to do to... Sometimes you can just push them in. And this is the downside to not having the LED strip. The yeah. LED strip, you'd have a much more consistent. Okay, so we're gonna show uh, actually connecting the batteries and we're gonna be using copper tape because uh, it's a very, fairly simple and easy solution. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of stick it to the negative side of the one battery and then the positive side of the other. Okay, so we have it connected uh, three batteries. So they essentially are like going together uh, to just the connection right here, which obviously isn't connected, is use uh, this device to uh, check the voltage and see. So since there's four 1.5 volt batteries, we're hoping that there'll be about six volts, maybe a little more. I'm gonna connect these lead things, which are connected to that device, and it seems like it's working. Okay, so um, we're gonna try and demonstrate how the wiring's gonna work. Uh, we got some wires from another project, as well as uh, this switch that we're gonna try to use to turn it on and off. And so basically what we're gonna do is um, right here again, where we didn't connect the batteries, we're gonna connect one battery um, using uh, maybe some copper tape to wire. Um, we're not sure about that yet. And then connect the one side of the wire, which um, I'm gonna have to uh, um, strip in a second um, to one side of the switch. So then when you have the switch on, uh, it'll conduct. And then this will go uh, using another wire to one end of the uh, the LEDs, like the bottom or the top, depending on which side is positive or negative, and the other side will connect to the other end of the battery loop. Okay, so I'm gonna connect this wire to one of the ends of the switch here. So I'm just twisting it together to make sure they're connected. Okay, and they seem to be connected pretty well. So now what I wanna see is how long does this wire need to be? Because I definitely don't want any extra. I'm using these uh, wire strippers and I'm there's a part at the end where I can just cut the wire. Um, so I'm gonna do that first. I'm just gonna move it like back. So I'm gonna start with a bigger one, see if that works, it goes through. So I'm gonna work my way down. It's too loose? Yeah, it's too loose. So this one seems pretty tight. So that should be good. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of electrical tape uh, right here, 
just to make sure that these exposed wires don't touch, especially when I've connected like the other wire. And one thing to note, I know uh, for this project we're using a red and a black wire, which sometimes signal negative and positive, but uh, we're not really paying attention to which side is negative or positive, as long as like the end result is um, it's working, that should be fine. I've done the exact same thing for the uh, other wire, the black one in this case as well. Uh, so now both wires are cut to length. Okay, now that we have this kind of completed, we want to test for continuity. We're again going to be using uh, this to do it. So we're, I'm going to switch it to the continuity uh, setting right there. If it's not continuous, uh, it'll show a 1. Then when I turn the switch on, now the like it's continuous throughout and we get a continuous rating. Now we're gonna try to hook this switch up to the battery um, and what we're gonna be using is copper tape. This is not ideal, um, definitely not what we want to do in a final product, but since this is more of a proof of concept, uh, it should hopefully allow us to at least like test if it works. So, so like, do you have to squeeze it or no? So now uh, we're gonna have to connect this end to the top of this, and we know that because um, looking at an individual light, um, there's a little positive and a negative right next to the LED, and this like big fat end is positive. So since we connected this positive end of the battery, um, we want to connect it to the positive end of that circuit. Okay, so we're also going to be using copper tape for this, which is, again, not ideal, but... Hopefully, it'll at least connect enough for the proof of concept. I'm trying to make sure it's not touching the other one and creating like a short circuit. The positive end of the battery connected, and we added another piece of copper tape to try and keep it in place better. Uh, so then that goes out to the switch here, which we can turn on and off, and that'll be like out at the end here. Then as long as the switch is turned on, it keeps going and goes right here to the positive end of this LED um, series. So we've got a piece of copper tape connected to the negative end of the battery chain. Now I'm gonna try and connect it to the negative end of the light series. So I've gotta have it at the start here, obviously, so. I definitely don't want it touching other stuff as well. So, okay, that seems to be working, and it's very not working great, but it's working. Wow, it's, so the lights, I mean, it's the circuit is working. There are some individual mm -hmm. lights that are not. All right, so I used, these uh, clippers. So I gotta figure out a way to uh, hang this. And so I think what I'm gonna do is kind of cut uh, like almost a figure eight shaped uh, hole in here that you can, that's bigger, let's put the screw through and then you hang, you know, push it up through the notch. So I'm probably gonna drill it and try to be careful. I don't want this whole thing to break. All right, so I got a piece of scrap wood. I already drilled a very small pilot hole and I'm gonna make it bigger now. I was kind of worried about it fracturing. Going straight down. All right, so I have a hole that's probably three-eighths of an inch. I'm gonna use a nail like this. So it fits in there pretty good. I'm gonna to try to make a little slot. I drilled another hole, a smaller one just above it. And now I'm gonna kind of cut that out to make a, so it's a slot for the nail. Okay, so I got the finished hole. And there's the nail. 
and so it would hang like that. I think that should be decent. So now what we gotta do is figure out the switch. I wanna put it in here. I need to drill a little hole. So there, I have a sense of where this is gonna come out. I can reach to here. So I'm gonna make a mark there and drill the hole there. What I wanna do is drill two holes that are basically the width of the box and then um, and put them, you know, I don't know, what is that, a third of an inch apart and then kind of, you know, cut it out in between. So I'm gonna try doing that. So here's those two holes. But I'm gonna cut that uh, to make it to make it into a rectangle shape. All right, so I got the, the switch in. Here's what it looks like from the outside. And so it doesn't, it's pretty good. It's pretty secure. So that should be good. And again, I had to detach it to get it through because I, I wanted these metal pieces on the outside to keep it from pushing in. So we just have it without the switch because we just want to show a couple of things. Not all the LEDs are lit up. Um, but if we have it just against the white, so here it is, if it was by itself, it doesn't glow as much. You put this behind it, and it lights up, I think, nicer. And that's actually not bad at all. But one thing that we saw that we liked was to take a piece of tin foil, crinkle it up, and you get like a real textured look to it, uh, which we thought was cool. Um, so we're going to do that. And right now we have a label on there. We're going to probably just custom print a label because this is this record isn't anything to us. We, it was just the blueness of the record. The fact that it was you know colored vinyl, transparent, that is why we're using it. So we'll probably do our own label. Okay, so we have the wires here connected to the switch um, going through the tin foil and then connected on either side there and it seems to be working. All right, so this is the finished version. It is a little bit rough. Um, we're gonna actually turn off the lights in the room, I think. Uh, you can see there's, some, there's um, some dark spots here because those LEDs are not lit up. So that is not what we intended. Um, but it's a proof of concept and let me put the hands of the clock in and we'll show you the finished thing. So there it is with the hands on there. Actually, the yellow hands go nicely with the blue. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, again, it's under a heavy fluorescent light. So this is actually where it might be uh, hanging something like this, where there's not some you know super bright light on it. Again, dark over here because the LEDs, to, we couldn't get them to stay lit. Um, these LEDs also do take a couple more volts. So we only got about six point whatever on them. I think they took up to nine. So that would obviously brighten it up a little bit. Uh, there's ways to improve it. Obviously, an LED strip would, you know, if you got it the right size, would really decrease the fuss and muss with these tiny little stickers and things like that. Um, but overall, I think it's a pretty good uh, project. Feel free to comment below about ways to improve it or change it. And uh, thanks for watching. I search thrift stores, Goodwills, garage sales, and more for possible treasures. Then I decide whether to purchase or pass. Watch what I do and decide for yourself. Would you buy it?